you called him a beautiful man. That will ring very difficult for many people looking at this grim figure on the screen. The man I remember was a beautiful person. He was gentle, he was kind. He's the kind of person that, you know, you, you would want our society to have, you know, to, to feel that this is the kind of person that's going to actually help future generations and whatever else. Very caring, very considerate towards others. But you, on uh, behalf of Cage, have gone on to say that he was radicalised not by any imam, but by British security. What we say is that the way that he was treated is de has definitely got to contribute to his, the ultimate destination that he is in right now. Of course, that's not the only factor. There are many factors when it comes to these things. But when we think about the efforts this young man made, look, we're talking about almost, uh, over a three-year period here where he's trying, he's trying his best to make a life for himself abroad. You know, it's not like he's going well, around... Hang on a minute. That yeah. life abroad, according to British security, and there does now seem, in retrospect, grave, grave evidence for this, was about joining al-Shabaab in Somalia to kill I'm, people. I'm afraid there's never been any evidence pr to, uh, presented to suggest that. If you have evidence against somebody, you present it to them, or you charge them, or you arrest them, you do something to make that clear. Now, to say that because he was associated to somebody who they may have been suspecting, who they placed under control orders, maybe, that's not evidence that he himself has done something wrong. And well, this but is I the used point. the word retrospective, and, and the fact is that he went on to, to join quite the grimmest movement that we in the Western world have seen, mm -hmm. in, well, in modern times. Um, and that would suggest he was on a path which ended with him performing in front of video cameras, wielding a knife, and in participation of murderous crimes. I accept what you're saying, John, in term, or I, listening to what you're saying. What I was say to that is that why then, if he was so, you know, in the terms that some people are using, so radical that, you know, he rejected these systems and whatever else and he hated the West and why would he then spend so much time trying to make his complaint to the IPCC, trying to use the media, trying to use law, trying to use politics, going to uh, his embassy in order to find diplomatic means of resolving the problems that he had. This was a man who was using the system to make a change in his life, in, in terms of the difficulties he was having immediately in front of him. But all the evidence never once is said, that he was living a parallel life, a life which I mean, perhaps you didn't detect, which British security were following, and evidence. which ended in what we are seeing now. I, I mean, that's the, the idea. Point. Give evidence let me use that. your, own, your yeah. own issue here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful man becomes a mass killer. Mm -hmm. um, that, that is a journey which doesn't just start and stop in 10 minutes. It's not 10 minutes. We're talking about over three years. Over three years. You know, if, I was, if it was me, I think I would have given up a long time before that. Why? He's but, trying extremely hard. He's trying extremely hard. And it's not like he's ever giving up. up. Giving up mm -hmm. doesn't result in doing what he's doing Look, now. After 2013, when he leaves, we don't know what happens to him next. But to say that he's already on a pathway to where he becomes while he was in the K in the UK, I don't accept that at all. And, you know, the interview you just done with the teacher very much backs that up, that the people who knew him, the people who he was around, that, um, you know, met with him and, you know, spent time with him, they all say the same thing. This is somebody who is extremely caring, loving and considerate. How long have you known that he is Jihadi John? I've only known him since um, Sunday. So you never recognised his voice, no. your friend, your beautiful man's voice? I mean, he, you know, once again, he was a client, a client that I had engagement with in relation to his case. So I met him seven or eight times, maybe, as he told me about the problems that he was having. A lot of email communication between the two. But, you know, there's a big difference between a, a friend who you're spending a lot of, a great deal of time with. Yeah, I mean, but, but, you know, but you, I think you, there are you, some striking similarities. Right. But it's only when it was, I was confronted by uh, uh, the journalist when the inquiries were made and then she showed me, that's when I went into shock. Right. But you've been on a journey as well. He's been on a journey and you've been on a journey. Mm -hmm. Do you now condemn what he does? I mean, you know, this is, this is, it, it's, it's insane to even ask that question because so... What well, it could do with an answer. Say, no, of course, but you're talking about a group here that was trying harder than most people in the UK to secure the release of Alan Henning to stop his execution. We hurt the day that Alan Henning died we hurt. We hurt a great deal. So I'm actually, re you know, John, I really yeah, respect you a lot, it, but I'm it, offended by the question because well, we hurt more than most people. One can be offended by a question, but one can give uh, a very straight answer. Absolute, what is your absolute, straight answer? But, but this is the point that I'm trying to make. The reason you're asking that question is just because I'm Muslim. You don't think I hurt when Alan Henning died? I hurt for him and I hurt for his family as well. And the reason you ask the question about condemnation is just because I'm Muslim. 
You no, know, it's and not. It is. It's not. It is because you're I'm engaged. Muslim. No, you, no I don't see you not. as a Muslim. I see you as part of a group <laughs> mm -hmm. that is involved in attempting to assist people who are in difficulty. So would you and ask that, Amnesty International or Liberty I who, most certainly who work would. Similar, I similar most cases, certainly you would. would ask them if, if Amnesty International were sitting yeah. in that seat yeah. and saying what you've been saying, I would say, but do you condemn what he's doing now? Okay. He needs to hear your John, voice. I think you're a very truthful person. He needs and to hear your voice. Yeah, because you're a truthful person, you know, and I believe what you're saying, I will answer you and say, absolutely, if somebody, whether it's Tony Blair, George Bush, Dick Cheney, when somebody's involved in war crimes, they should be condemned for those war crimes, and they should be held accountable I'm for those war crimes. I'm asking about Mohammed M. Was. Of course. Do you, I included you've mentioned him in that. Tony Blair, yeah, you've mentioned George I mean, Bush, I, I, but you haven't mentioned Mohammed yeah. M. Was by name. Do you condemn what he's doing? Of course I condemn the, the, uh, the, the actions of, of killing people and, and assassinating them or executing them. You know, that's not, that's not really the way which I think that they should be going about doing they are things. his actions. As far as... As far as we can see, I can't say that for certain, because the video that I've seen, it cuts away. But if he's it's true... He's there, he's there with a knife, the exactly. men are in their orange suits, exactly. and they're without asking, their heads within asking, 10 seconds. You're asking about whether or not he's executed them. I don't know that. But what I'm saying is that even involvement in that is wrong. Mm. It's wrong, and people should, you know, people should obviously think about what they're doing in these places, because coming back to what Cage feels is very important, when you have a cycle of violence, when you have things like Guantanamo Bay mm -hmm. taking place and we see the images of torture coming mm -hmm. out of Abu Ghraib and uh, Guantanamo and everywhere else, mm -hmm. then what that does is that that sends a message to other parts mm -hmm. of the world that you can treat hu human beings like animals and what we're seeing in Iraq right now is a manifestation of what we have seen elsewhere. You can certainly argue that one begets the other, but you can condemn both. Absolutely. Um, I mean, what could you say? Uh, you know, on behalf, for example, of Mohammed Mwazi, uh, to the families of James Soley, Stephen Sokloff, David Haynes, Alan Henning. I mean, what can be said I mean, on his behalf? I, I don't know what I could say on his behalf. You know, I mean, I, you know, the person that I knew is so different than the person that I see on, on TV. So I don't feel like I can even speak to... And I don't, I don't recognize those two, the, the same people. I, in fact, there's a small part of me that still hopes that we've just made an astronomical mistake that, you know, the Washington Times but correspondent do, do we who not said all, that she, we, she confirmed his identity. Have, yeah. have you, me, Lord West, the rest, don't we all have to try and work together to work out how on earth this ghastly journey Absolutely. ever occurred? And that's what we're saying. We're saying there has to be accountability. There has to be accountability of MI5. There has to be accountability in every single part of this story so that we can understand yeah. how it is that somebody becomes disenfranchised from living here and wanting and feeling like they belong here.